I have a middle schooler. Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Leilani, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you my curriculum choices, my homeschool curriculum choices for my new sixth grader. I have a sixth grader. That's middle school, if you didn't know. But first, I want you to know that I am a former public and private school teacher. I do homeschool evaluations for students in the state of Florida, as well as testing for homeschool kids in the state of Florida. And my background is middle school. I taught middle school for over 10 years. I love this age. I'm one of the very few, I promise. I'm, I'm not, I'm not joking at all. So let me tell you a little bit about my son. He is 11 years old. He is moving into sixth grade and he is quite bright. I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I'm his mom, but he seriously loves to learn. He has things that he's absolutely fascinated with and he's smart. So when I am prepping for middle school, honestly, I am looking at middle school as one big lump of three years preparing them for high school. Now this doesn't mean that I'm going to take them through the ringer and push, push, push and start doing SATs. No, I'm not doing any of that stuff. I mean, in fact, when I was in middle school, there was kind of like a saying, we would say, you know, don't worry about it. They're just gonna forget everything they learned in middle school and high school is just for review. Okay, that's kind of true because of hormones. Thank you, hormones. Uh -huh. So in your middle school years, just kind of enjoy it. Let them enjoy it and find stuff that they like. Oh, and be flexible with them because you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad days and you're just gonna, you're just gonna have days. So there is a group of curriculum that I, my science, my writing, and my history, my Bible is family curriculum. And that's based on what they like and what they're interested in. And I've taken in consideration all my kids. I have a video on that. I'm gonna stick, you know, iCard up there as well as the link in the description box below. So we are also a co-op family. So we do attend co-ops. So this year, just as an added extra, my son is co-oping with science where he is doing astronomy and it is from a creationist perspective. There's a lot of materials that I found very useful, including Dr. Jason Lyle. If you have not heard of this man, he's amazing. My middle schooler is going to be reading this book, which is by him, it's called Taking Back Astronomy. There is stuff online. If you go check out YouTube, that's this thing that you're on right now. He has some really good little lectures and seminars you can check out if you're interested and they're free. He also has a curriculum called the Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky, which we are purchasing that. And I am also purchasing the high school astronomy curriculum because my son is so interested in astronomy that I think I can kind of sift through there and see if there's anything in there that he might glean from. He also has a book that he's been reading. That one comes from a secular perspective, but that's kind of why I'm following up, up with this. He also has this dream of becoming a politician. My son wants to be a politician. So we are putting him through a class. We've done American government with him, but he's also gonna be doing a constitution class. Now his younger brother is gonna take it too as well, but it's gonna teach him, you know, the constitution. It's gonna teach him the Bill of Rights. It's gonna talk about the three branches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's gonna give you actually the correct, correct interpretation of the constitution. Now I like to follow Rick Green and the wall builders they have some really good material out. I'll stick some links down below, but that's what, what the class is going to be using when it discusses the Constitution. So he's super excited. We're also looking at uh, putting him in the YMCA has a special program that teaches them how to write bills. It actually gets them involved with some local government stuff. So we're actually gonna get him involved with that. He's looking forward to that as well. And he also does another co-op on Fridays, which is more of like social, little bit of an extracurricular fun Friday kind of thing for him, but it's really good because he sees his friends. But if you see a pattern here, I found what he loves and I'm allowing him to explore that area, especially in this middle school age. Because when I get to high school, I'm really going to start narrowing down and specializing him in, I mean, of course you have the core subjects, but he's gonna start specializing in what his passion is. So maybe take some, you know, early college courses to get some dual enrollment going on maybe get him a job, like an internship or volunteer volunteer work in that field, that's gonna be high school. So I am approaching all of this as kind of like a prep to his future. So middle school, let's just have fun with that. You explore in elementary, now let's have fun with what you actually like. Yes, middle school.
We did science. We talked a little bit about American government. I talked about my family videos, but let's talk about some math. Now, my son this year went from a sixth grade level in mathematics to a ninth grade level in mathematics. And yes, I did test him with a nationally norm test. I am blaming teaching textbooks for that one. He's just, he's plowing through it and he likes it. Every morning he wakes up at six o'clock, jumps on teaching textbooks and he's done before breakfast. But I am gonna use a supplement over the summer because he's gonna finish, he's gonna finish sixth grade math very soon, actually. But I'm gonna use Keys to Success, which is a great, great pre-algebra type program. It's got decimals, it's got fractions, it's just basically is a unit study on those topics. And it's gonna bring you through it. And I use that actually before we put him in teaching textbooks. And he was already at a sixth grade level when he entered in fifth grade. It's just, it almost feels like teaching textbooks just pushed him up a little more. So I don't have a problem going back to Keys to Success for the summer as kind of just a supplement before we move him back into teaching textbooks. That's what we're doing for him. He also loves language arts. He loves to read, he loves to write. He loves to write and he loves IEW. Now we are doing ancient history writing as kind of like a family subject with his brother, but I also got him this IEW curriculum. He's gonna do an unboxing with me. He hasn't, he hasn't seen this yet. And I only opened it a little bit to just see it wrapped in packages. So I will do an unboxing of this, but this is their IEW Structure and Style Level B. It is taught through DVDs or you can do an online forever streaming. I'm really excited. I was hesitant to do this, I'll be honest, but the fact that he loves writing so much, that's why I'm kind of doubling up with the ancient history. That's, that's just fun. And it, 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 sorry, we like he likes writing. Now grammar, on the other hand, mm, not so much. Along with handwriting, his handwriting. We're working on that. And so, to kill two birds with one stone, not literally, but figuratively, we're gonna do both handwriting and grammar and vocabulary together in this lovely curriculum, Fix It Grammar. We've actually already started using it because we are a full year-round homeschool family. And this is great because it only does 15 minutes a day. So this is a whole entire story just broken up by sentences. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna rewrite this whole sentence, you know, circle which, this in this case, they're having to circle which there it goes to. They're gonna find the vocabulary word, look it up in the dictionary, and write down the definition. Takes about 15 minutes a day, you got your handwriting in there, you got your vocabulary, you got your grammar, because you're repeating these things and you're building upon these things. Super simple, there is no diagramming in this. And I do have to confess that I do wanna do some kind of diagramming with them. So I'm looking at a well-trained mind. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the description box. But this is, diagramming is something I'm interested in. Till then, 15 minutes and we're done with grammar and it's effective. We are also doing another vocabulary type activity, which is basically root words. And we're doing this as a family, like all my kids are doing it, but I did wanna mention it because this is working on his handwriting as well. But it's done as little, fun little lap books. The older boys have worksheets that go along with it, and honestly, this once again takes about 15 minutes a day. So you got 30 minutes with grammar, handwriting, I think this is spelling too, to be quite honest. And speaking of spelling, I have made an executive decision, sort of as like a mom slash principal, well, husband's the principal, but I made the decision not to do spelling right now. And that is because when I did do the nationally norm test with them, their spelling was really good. And I have to accredit that to all about spelling. That was their kind of foundational stuff to begin with. And so now things are just kind of moving with them. They're also gonna help their sister learn spelling. So many times I've handed my boys, hey, do this with your sister and give her a spelling test or help her understand why there's an E at the end of the, of the word. What does it do? And that, that's how I trick them into reviewing some stuff they may have forgotten. You know, they do say that when you teach something, you learn and it learns 70% of what you teach. Some of the best literature out there is for middle school. Well, high school too, but middle school has a lot of really good literature out there. So I have a list of books that I want him to read over the course of the next three years. 
If he likes them, great. If he doesn't, eh, not a big deal because I want him to like literature and I want him to be exposed to good literature. So let me just quickly share with you the list of books that I have picked out. We have already read through The Hobbit, so we are gonna continue with the rest of the Lord of the Rings series. Really excited about that. <laughs> During our study of Greece, we're going to be looking at the Percy Jackson series, which I heard is highly addictive. We will find out. We are going to continue reading through the Winged Feather Saga. We are on book three. Looking forward to finding out what happens with that, as well as book four. So that's a continuation of what we're doing. I also want to read The Borrowers, The Island of the Blue Dolphin, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. We've done Tom Sawyer. It's time to get to that. I wanted to wait till he was a little bit older. I'm going to be honest. My favorite author is Mark Twain. That man is like crazy, awesome, genius, amazing. I want him to pick up on all the little subtleties in that book. So yeah, probably eighth grade for that one. Because of Win Dixie, because I heard it was good. I don't know much about it, but I heard it was good, so we're gonna read that. The Phantom Toll Booth. That's one of those books that I say, and then people go, oh yeah, it's good. So we'll try that one out. I have no clue what it's about. I just heard it was really good. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Tuck Everlasting. Once again, I have no clue what it's about, but it's one of those books that you're just supposed to read in middle school, along with Holes. That's another one. But I actually know what Holes is about, and we're gonna try that one out. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. That is actually one of those Holocaust type books. Where the Red Fern Grows. Yes, I wanna make my son cry. And of course, The Giver, because that's just a classic. Also, probably Number of the Stars. That's another one that just kind of goes right along with The Giver. We're also gonna do The Bronze Bow. And I'm really interested in these books. You probably have not heard of these books, but this is going to talk about the Six Day War, which is when Israel became a nation. So I really feel like that's really important history that we don't talk about. And there is, it looks like a part two, Benny's War. So I think this is, this one's the Yom Kippur Wars. So I'm really interested in actually reading this maybe as a read aloud with the family. Of course, I'm not limited to just this. I love reading. Love, love, love reading. And I'm always looking for some really good books here and there. So if you have any suggestions for middle school, boy. Ah! Music, I forgot to mention music because that's a really, really big one in my household. So everyone in our household has to learn a musical instrument. Yep, that's my rule. It is a core subject. So if they can't pick out an instrument and we can't somehow get them lessons, they learn piano. I can teach piano. So what I do with them is I have their warm ups. I also use the Faber curriculum and I have something called Simply Piano. It does cost money, but it's worth it because we use it every day for all three of my kids. With this app, they're able to learn new songs, learn chord progressions. It kind of walks you through it. It also has you uh, to like five minute warm ups where you can practice your notes, matching the note name to the notes on the staff, to the notes on the keyboard. You can also assign your child songs to do. Now it doesn't check it for you, but the library that they have of songs is absolutely ridiculous. So I like classical music and I want my kids to be learning classical pieces. Ode to Joy, he's learned some minuets and G's, some Chopin, and all from Simply Piano. It's really cool. You can even print out the sheet music if you don't want to be staring at the phone or the iPad the whole time. Now, he has displayed some interest in joining a homeschool band, and yeah, there is a homeschool band at the co-op. Kind of excited about that possibility, but we have to sit down and really talk to him and make sure that he's interested in that instrument because I am not going out to buy him a clarinet or oboe or saxophone and find out that he doesn't like it and we just have to turn around and sell it. So, but I wanna make sure he's serious. And if he is serious, I am totally down for it. I also want him to learn Spanish. And I did forget to mention this in my group, family group thing. So we're gonna jump into Spanish, but we're gonna do like a six week intensive where all we're gonna do is Spanish for six weeks. No other subjects, and maybe math, because that's good to have that back there. But seriously, no other subjects, just Spanish. Uh, my son is 50% Puerto Rican, and I'm part Cuban but none of us speak Spanish, and we live in Florida. Like, totally doesn't make sense. Especially if he wants to be a politician, he, we gotta know Spanish. All of my kids need to learn Spanish. So that is gonna happen. I'm planning on doing a video on how we're gonna do that. And if you have any recommendations for some good curriculum, please let me know in the description box below. But this is basically it. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna share much, much more. This is a very interactive channel, so, it's our journey. We're learning as you're learning. We're sharing experiences together. 
please feel free to subscribe. Check us out in the future. My name is Leilani, and I'm gonna stick some videos around my face. Oh, and I will stick one with my daughter who has Down syndrome, she's, she's like crazy cute. Check those out, and I will see you in our next video. Bye.